In the last few years, uh, uh, the shares and the bonds of emerging countries uh, have had very interesting performances. Uh, and uh, what will be their performance in 2013? Um, I, I think we're, our expectations for returns uh, in 2013 for emerging market bonds will be probably somewhere in the mid to uh, high single digits. Um, you know, 2012 was a year of, has been a year of significant gains. I think next year our expectations certainly would be more modest in terms of returns, but uh, we still think that uh, emerging market bonds will outperform uh, most uh, developed market uh, bond markets. Well, still investments in BRIC countries or in new countries such as South Africa, the Middle East, or Latin America? Well, I mean, the BRICS has been a very popular place for investors uh, in, in, uh, in, in recent years. Uh, but increasingly, we see opportunities uh, outside of the, uh, the BRICS, um, you know, places not just like South Africa, but you also mentioned, uh, uh, you know, in broader parts of Africa, like Sub-Saharan Africa, Turkey. Um, you know, other countries um, such as uh, Latin America where we see, uh, you know, a real good story, countries like Peru, Chile, um, Colombia, which are investment grade countries. So there's plenty of opportunities uh, as investors to broaden our horizons uh, into a number of different uh, emerging markets. So what are the prospects uh, for bond investments in emerging countries? Um, we, we continue to see uh, very good prospects for uh, for bond investors in emerging markets. Um, you know, yields have been coming down in recent years, spreads have been narrowing in recent years, uh, but these are uh, mainly due to the fact that these emerging countries are uh, increasingly uh, now investment grade. Uh, investors recognize both the attractive yields, but more importantly, the uh, reduced volatility in these countries. So therefore, you know, return expectations are, are declining. But most importantly, we believe uh, the risk and the volatility uh, are, are declining as well in these emerging countries. So, uh, so I guess, you know, to summarize, you know, we believe that uh, returns, uh, you know, return prospects in these emerging countries uh, still remain very healthy. Is it better to make uh, direct investments or is it preferable to enter into these markets uh, through investment funds? Um, it, it's better for investors to, in order to access these markets, to go directly to an investment fund. The reason why is that um, these bonds uh, that we invest in are, are not as easy accessible on a, on a stock exchange as a, you know, as a big equity company would be uh, in, a, in an emerging market. So therefore, you know, we believe the best way for investors to get exposure to this asset class is through uh, a fixed income fund. Uh, and through a fund manager who's been doing it for a long time, who has the resources to look at uh, a, a large group of countries, uh, a large group of companies, and can provide the research, the analysis that's necessary uh, in order to make uh, these informed investment decisions. In the last 15 years, uh, both uh, uh, stocks and bonds of emerging countries have had very interesting performances. What about the performances in 2015? 2015? 13. 13. Uh, well, I think uh, it's going to be very much driven by the macro macro environment still. Uh, you do have interesting uh, inflection points in next year, especially in Europe with the German election uh, and Italian election. Uh, so there's some important uh, aspects. We think there's still going to be some volatility in the markets uh, going into next year. We think it's going to be a low growth environment, generally from an economic standpoint, given the developed market debt issue. And from that perspective, I think we, we still think you'll have more of the same. You'll have 
very low growth economic uh, conditions, uh, relatively low growth in, in the in the in the uh, markets, and therefore I think you're going to continue to need to look for interesting opportunities to diversify, and also to protect yourself from tail risk uh, macro events that could uh, cause the markets to 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 have a larger than expected drawdown. Do you suggest that we should go on investing in BRIC countries uh, or we should invest in new countries such as South Africa, Middle East and uh, Latin America? Uh, I would say uh, all of the above. I think there are, there are certainly opportunities to continue to diversify. We heard a presentation today where pensions are still underinvested in, in a lot of the uh, emerging countries, the BRIC countries, as you mentioned. I think when you get into the more uh, frontier countries, we do see opportunities there as well. I think you need to pick your pick your timing on frontier countries. Uh, again, focused on the macro risks in those particular areas. But I think in general, uh, there's still scope to continue to expand investments into emerging markets, uh, given the the span between developed markets in terms of the debt. Again, the debt situation versus the emerging, which again, as we saw today, has a quite a good uh, dispersion in it in terms of those two uh, the two markets. What are the prospects for investments uh, in bonds in emerging countries? Uh, it's going to sound like everything's an opportunity, but I think there too in emerging markets, uh, bonds continue to have a, a interesting spread relative to developed markets, uh, especially those 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 markets where yields are below below one percent. So again, looking at the fundamentals in the emerging markets, the fundamentals still would argue that you would be diversifying into emerging market bonds. That being said, there's been a lot of money that flows into emerging markets from time to time. And again, I think you would need to sit down and look at the most recent flows to make sure that you're not potentially sitting in front of a potential uh, mini bubble where you have a lot of money chasing uh, fewer bonds. And, and we would look at it from an allocation standpoint to make sure that we're coming in at the right time into that market. Do you think uh, um, that it is better to invest in government bonds or in corporate bonds? Hmm. Well, I guess it depends on which government bonds, uh, first off. Um, <clears throat> certainly, corporates have, have had a very good run uh, recently, in the last couple of years, actually. I think yields have gotten to a pretty aggressive level in, in corporate bonds in general, meaning that they're, they're quite low by historical standards. But again, that's based in pretty solid fundamentals on most corporates, uh, meaning that their financial condition is quite strong. Uh, and so it's it's probably uh, not unreasonable to see corporate yields where they are today. Uh, to the question of whether you should be in governments or corporates, again, I would it, it's a wide question in the sense that I think there are certain government bonds. You know, buying Germany at negative yields on the short end certainly seems to be a certainly a flight to to quality, a flight to safety. But if you're looking for opportunities, I think you can find certain government debt uh, that would have much better yield. Again, we talked about the emerging markets. Uh, in general, I think government debt is quite rich, but it's uh, meaning it's quite expensive. But that's due to a lot of the central bank activity, uh, given the crisis that we've been through in the last few years. And so the risk is that at some point that that will have to unwind. Uh, we don't think that's anytime soon. And uh, so we wouldn't be running from government bonds, but we do think there's opportunities to diversify away from government bonds at this point.